Hi all, um, today we're going to talk about chapter 5-5 and that is all about negative exponents and scientific notation. So let's talk about negative exponents. Up to this point you have been able to do problems that look like, oops, that look like something like this. You know that if you have the same base and you're dividing you use the quotient property or the quotient rule for exponents and you subtract the top the exponent in the numerator minus the exponent in the denominator and that gives you x cubed 5 minus 2 is 3 but now what happens if we change this up a bit and we put an x squared on top and an x to the fifth in our denominator now when we use the quotient property we get x 2 minus 5 and we end up with an x a negative exponent x to the negative 3 so let's see if we can reduce the x squared over x to the fifth as a fraction to see if we can um, define what an, a negative exponent actually means so we know that x squared really is x times x and we know that x to the fifth is really x times x times x times x times x. And with any fraction, we know that if we have x divided by x, that it doesn't just cancel out, it divides to 1. So now we have 1 times x, and we have 4x's on the bottom because one of them divided to 1. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for our other x. x over x is 1 as well. Now we have 1 times 1 over x times x times x. And when we reduce, we, we get 1 over x cubed. So if x squared over x to the fifth equals x to the negative third, but it also equals... 1 over x cubed, we've just defined what a negative exponent does. A negative exponent is just the reciprocal um, with the exponent turned positive. So let's take a look at the definition of a negative exponent. And I, and I want you guys to write this definition down. It says a negative exponent. If a is a real number other than 0 and n is an integer, then a to the negative n is just the reciprocal of a to the n. And we're going to go ahead and use that definition to simplify each of the following expressions and write them with positive exponents only. So if you need a second to write that down, go ahead and pause the video. Okay, let's go ahead and continue with our examples. We're going to take the definition of a negative exponent and we're going to write each of these expressions with positive exponents only. So if we take a look at the definition, what we do with this 5 to the negative third power is we take the reciprocal of 5 to the third. And so we're basically taking anything that's in the numerator and putting it in the denominator. Anything in the numerator that has a negative exponent we put in the denominator. We create that, that reciprocal. Now let's take a look at the sec second example. And recall that when you apply an exponent to a variable, it's only applied to the variable that's next to it. So this y to the negative 4, that negative 4 exponent is only being applied to the y and not the 3. So if we take the reciprocal of y to the 4th, and we write it like that, we end up with 3 over y to the fourth. Okay, now let's take a look at the next example. It's a little bit tricky, but we're going to take each of these terms and look at them by themselves. We know that 3 to the negative 1 power is really the reciprocal of 3 to the first power, so we'll take the reciprocal of 3. And then we're going to add to that the reciprocal of 2 to the first power. And that's just 1 third plus 1 half. And in order to simplify this, we need to find a common denominator. 
and that will be six. So we get two over six, whoops, two over six plus three over six. And when we simplify that expression, we get five sixths. Okay, last example here. We're gonna take the number negative five and we're, we're raising it to the negative two power. So that tells me that we have to take the reciprocal of negative five squared. So the reciprocal of negative five squared. And I know we can figure that out. What's negative five squared? Negative five squared is just 25. So our final answer is one over 25. So what happens if you have a negative exponent in your denominator? Well, let's see. I want you guys to write this in your notebook. And it states that if a is a real number other than zero and n is an integer, then one over a to the negative n is just a to the positive n. So if you notice, anything in the denominator moves up into the numerator if it has a negative exponent. So let's use that concept and we're going to simplify each of these following instructions or expressions and we're going to write those results with positive exponents only. So according to the definition, anything in the denominator that has a negative exponent moves into the numerator with a positive exponent. So 1 over s to the negative 5 is just x to the fifth power. Our second example is 1 over 2 to the negative third power. Here's our denominator. We have something with um, a negative exponent. We're going to move that into the numerator and change the exponent to a positive. So we get 2 cubed. And we can evaluate 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. All right, our next example, we're going to have to use whoops, the quotient property. Mm, maybe not. We don't have the same base, so we can't even use the quotient property. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take everything in the denominator that has a negative exponent and we're going to move that into the numerator. So we get x to the negative 7 times y to the fifth power and remember to change that exponent to a positive. And then you notice we have something in the numerator that has a negative exponent and according to our other rule negative exponents in the numerator move and become positive exponents in the denominator. Okay, so this is our final answer here. Let's take a look at our next example. Again, anything in the numerator that has a negative exponent moves to the denominator. Anything in the denominator that has a negative exponent moves to the numerator. So we're just going to play the switcheroo game. This 3 moves up and this 4 moves down. So we end up with 3 squared in the numerator, 4 cubed in the denominator. So we know how to simplify that. 3 squared is 9. 4 cubed, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. And this is our final answer. All right, in our next example, we have two things being divided, and this time they have the same base, so we can use our quotient property. We're going to take the exponent in the numerator and subtract from it the exponent in the denominator. So negative 3 minus 2 gives us a negative 5 exponent. And then we're going to apply our negative exponent rule, and we're going to take anything in the numerator that has a negative exponent and move it into the denominator. Take that reciprocal and give it a positive exponent. And that's our final, whoops, that is our final answer. Next, we have an example where we have in the denominator, y is being raised to the negative seventh power, so we need to move that back into the numerator and give it a positive exponent, and there's nothing else to do. No simplification, and everything has positive exponents. All right.
Let's use our quotient property on this one. We have two things that are being divided. They have the same base. So if we subtract their exponent, remember when an exponent's missing, it is 1. So we take the top exponent and we subtract the exponent in the denominator. And when we do that, we get z, 1 minus a negative 4 is 1 plus 4, which is 5. z to the fifth power, and that's our final answer there. Next example, it tells us um, if, we, if we remember that power property, we apply that negative 2 exponent to everything inside the parentheses. So we should get, there's the 5 has a power of 1, and the 9 has a power of 1. So we're going to apply that negative 2. We're going to multiply exponents. We're going to say 5 raised to 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 9 raised to 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Okay, now we need to apply our negative exponent rule. We're going to move our 9 to our numerator, give it a positive exponent. Move our 5 into the denominator, give it a positive exponent. And then we can simplify that. 9 squared is 81, 5 squared is 25, and that's our final answer. Okay, so now we're going to use all of our knowledge of exponents, both negative and positive exponents, and all of our exponent rules to simplify all the following examples. So here we're going to go ahead and first use our power of a product rule. We're going to take the exponent on the outside of our parentheses and we're going to multiply all of the exponents inside our parentheses. So we get a to the negative 20 and b to the positive 15. The instructions say we cannot have negative exponents. All of our answers have to have positive. So we're going to apply our negative exponent rule and move a to the 20th into our denominator. There's nothing left we can do, so that is as simple as it gets. All right, our next example, the very first thing we should do is we should apply the um, power property. And so we're going to take the 3 on the outside and multiply our exponent on the inside. So we end up with x squared times, 3 times 5 is 15, so that's x to the 15th over x to the 7th. We're going to use our product property rule in our numerator. Two things with the same base. When we multiply them, we add their exponents. So we get x to the 17th over x to the 7th. And then we're going to apply our quotient property. We have two things with the same base. We are um, dividing them. So we subtract exponents, 17 minus 7. So we end up with x to the 10th. All right, in our next example, we have a negative 2 exponent on the outside of our parentheses. And we're missing some exponents on the inside, so I'm going to write them in. And remember, our power of a product says that we uh, multiply all of these exponents with the exponent on the outside. So let's go ahead and do that first. We have 5 to the negative 2 power, p to the negative 16 power, and q in our denominator to the negative 2 power. Now we're going to go ahead and move all of our negative exponents around. Both things on top have to move to our denominator, and what's in our denominator has a negative exponent, so it has to move to our numerator. So I'm going to go ahead and write it like this, and remember to change those exponents to positive exponents when you move them. We have one last thing. We know what 5 squared is, so we're going to go ahead and simplify that. And we are going to end up with 25p to the 16th. All right, while this looks really complicated, our next example really truly isn't. All right, so we are going to take a look and we're going to notice that we have multiple things in our numerator and the same things in our denominator. So we have 
6 to the negative 2 and 6 to the negative 3, they're being divided. So the first thing we'll do is apply the quotient property to our 6s and subtract their exponents. Then we notice that our x is both in our numerator and denominator. So we're going to apply the quotient property to our x. And it'll be negative 4 minus 3. And then we also have y's in our numerator and denominator. So we're going to apply the quotient property to our y's. What we need to do now is just simplify all of our exponents. So negative 2 minus a negative 3 is a positive 1. x to the negative 7. y to the second power. Last thing we need to do is change all of our negative exponents to positive by moving them around. So we have 6y squared and our x moves into the denominator with a positive exponent. And our last example before we hit scientific notation is this one. Again, a couple of things that we don't have exponents on. So I'm going to put our exponents here. And when we do our negative 3, we're going to put parentheses around that because that negative is also being raised to the third power. So let's go ahead and apply the exponent on the outside to all those exponents on the inside. We'll multiply them all. So we get a negative 3 to the third power, x to the twelfth power, y cubed, over x to the 6th power, y to the negative 6th power. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and simplify our number, and we're going to use the quotient property on our variables. Um, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, times negative 3 is negative 27. And we're going to take our exponents for our x's, we are dividing them, so we subtract exponents. 12 minus 6, we have a y in both the numerator and denominator, so we're also going to do the same for our y. And now we're going to simplify that. We get x to the 6th power, y to the 9th power. And there's our answer. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and look at scientific notation. A positive number is written in scientific notation if it is written as the product of a number a, where a has to be greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10, and an integer power r of 10. And scientific notation looks like this. And you guys have worked with scientific notation probably since 7th grade. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of scientific notation. We have 2.03 raised to the 10th power. What does that really mean? Well, that really means 2.03, 10 to the 6th power. We're multiplying it by 10 to the 6th power. 10 to the 6th power is a 1, followed by 6 zeros. And if you remember, we move when we multiply by powers of 10, we move our decimal place over by the number of zeros in our power of 10. So this is just 2, 0, 3. That's one, two, two places I've moved it to the right. I now need to move it four more places, so I'll add four zeros to the end. So we come up with a standard number of 2,030,000. So this is 2,030,000 in scientific notation, and this is in standard decimal form. So let's go ahead and apply the same thought process to the next example. And remember, this power of 6, okay, that's a positive power of 6. So when we're multiplying by a number bigger than 10 or bigger than 1, we move the decimal to the right. When we multiply by a number or a fraction, we're going to move the decimal to the left. So here we have 8.1. In this example, 8.1. And we're going to multiply it. And remember, 
this is going to be our negative exponent moves our 10 to our denominator with a positive exponent. And so now we get 8.1. 1 to the over 10 to the fifth is a 1 with five zeros. And when we divide by a power of 10, we're going to move this decimal place five places to the left. If I move it there, that's 1. And I need four zeros in front to fill it in. Oops, I'm going to have to move that over there. Here, let's do that. So we get 0 .000081, which is a pretty small number. This again is standard decimal form. This is our scientific notation for that number. So let's go ahead and write each of these numbers in scientific notation. And according to the definition, we have to have a number in the ones column. Nothing in the tens or hundreds or beyond, but we have to have a number in the ones column. So we're going to take 0 .000007, and we're going to have to move that decimal place so that 7 is in the ones column. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places. So since we're, whoops, since we're changing our very small number into 7, we're going to have to multiply by a power of 10 with a negative exponent. And we move that decimal, how many places? One, two, three, four, five, six places. So we'll have to give this a negative six um, exponent to make this seven into a very small number. Now let's do the same thing with this number. We have to have a number in the ones column. So we are going to move our decimal places currently here. We're going to move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. So we get 2.07. Since we moved it seven places, we took a big number and made it smaller. So we're going to have to make it big again by multiplying it by a positive power of 10. Our next example is 0 .0043. We need a number in our ones column, so we're going to move our decimal place over three places to get 4.3. And since 4.3 is bigger than this number here, we need to multiply it by a power of 10 with a negative exponent. And since we moved it over three, it'll be a negative three. Okay, last example here. We're going to take 812,000 and change it into scientific notation. Decimal place here. We're going to move this one, two, three, four, five places to get 8.12. We're going to multiply this 8.12, which is smaller than this number that we started with. So we need a positive exponent. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to make it bigger, times 10 to the fifth. All of these are our scientific notation representation of our standard form numbers here. Now let's go ahead and convert from scientific notation to standard form. We've already done two examples, so I only have one here. All right, this tells me that we have 7.29 and we're multiplying it by 1 over 10 cubed, which is 7.29 times 1 over 1,000. And we know when we divide by a power of 10, we're making our number smaller. So we're going to move the decimal in 7 to 9 over three places. It started here, 1, 2, 3. It's going to end up right there. We need to add two more zeros, and there is our standard form of our number. I'll erase my little hoops. There's our standard decimal form. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and write these in standard decimal form without exponents. Mm, you know what? We've already done a couple of examples like that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is let's go ahead and work these examples down here. We're going to perform the indicated operation. 
and write each result in standard decimal notation. So here we have four things being multiplied. And remember, this is multiplication. So we have 5 times 10 to the negative fourth and 8 times 8 times 10 to the sixth power. So when we do something like this, we're going to group our numbers together and we're going to multiply our numbers, 5 and 8, and then we are going to multiply our powers of 10 and I'm grouping them like this so you can see exactly what we're going to do. Here our bases are the same, so we're going to add their exponents. 5 times 8 is 40, and then when we multiply that by a power of 10, we're going to add those exponents. Negative 4 and 6 is 2, so we're going to multiply 40 by 10 squared, which is 100. Multiplying it by 100 tells me to move my decimal of 40 over to the right two places. So I'll need to add two zeros to this number. And here we are in standard decimal form. All right, guys, last example and we're done. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to do this division. And we're going to work it like a regular problem. We're going to take our numbers, 64 over 32, and we'll divide those. And then we're going to group our powers of 10 and divide those by subtracting their exponents. 64 divided by 32 is 2. And then we're multiplying that by, since 10, our bases are the same, we subtract their exponents. So it'll be 10 raised to the 3 minus a negative 7, which gives us 2 times 10, whoops, 10 to the 10th power. The 10th power of 10 has 10 zeros, so we're going to have to add 10 zeros to this 2. That's a big number. So here's our 2. Let's move that decimal place over to the right 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What number is that? Hmm. 100,000 million. 20 billion. That is my final answer. Okay, guys, why don't you go ahead and take your textbook out and get started on the homework for tonight. I will see you all tomorrow.